welcome you to this very unusual and special service, March the 22nd, 2020, at Memorial Presbyterian Church in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. We are under very unusual circumstances because of the coronavirus outbreak, but we have an added unusualness here, and that is that our minister, Reverend David Dawson Surkitaraj, is presently in Australia on vacation. And uh, when he comes back, he will have a couple of weeks of quarantine as well. So we don't know how many t uh, versions of this we'll be doing in the next week or two, but uh, we hope that you are able to join us and uh, worship with us. We welcome others who are maybe um, listening to this from other churches. We hope that this will be a blessing to you as well. So we will be going through a basic service and we uh, hope that you can join along with us and that your heart will be lifted throughout all of this. We'll try not to be overly long. Uh, we have Rob, who is going to be ministering to us today. We'll try to keep him down to a minimum as well. <laughs> he didn't like that. We're going to start off with our reading for the fourth Sunday of Lent. And there are other, a few other people here with us that are going to be reading this, participating in this together. God provides for every need. Guidance in right paths, presence in darkest valleys, nourishment beyond measure. God shines light on the word, world in Jesus. Opening eyes that are blind, exposing prejudice and fear, offering new understanding of life's good purpose. But we persist in our own ways. Judging by appearance, Denying others' experience, hoarding what we can for ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Creator God, 
you are the source of light and love, rest and nurture, hope and peace. Open our eyes to your goodness. Empower us to live as children of light, bringing rich harvests of all that is good and right and true. Enlighten us to see the world with your eyes of love, so may all people know your goodness and mercy forever. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. into your light that we may truly see. Bring us again and again until our eyes which were blind are now opened and we come to understand more and more who you are. Overcome our unbelief and transform us into the ones who not only follow your light but live in your light. Shine upon us with your grace we pray. We pray this through the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory.
Our scripture readings today will all be from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And the first is the Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring, bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Rome. is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. 
Try to find what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The Gospel reading is from John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 11. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but someone who is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
challenging times. Those who serve our health needs, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual. The mayor and council, the food bank, and those who think outside the box and put together online worship services like this one, and other resources to help Memorial Presbyterian Church to continue to be what God intended. Please pray and continue to pray for our community and church family especially for our minister, the Reverend Dr. Deva Sugirtharaj and his wife, Lily, who we hope will be able to return from their time in Australia very soon. Please pray also for the members of session and the board of managers and our other leaders, teachers, and members as we go forward. These are challenging times, but they are not times without precedent. In ancient times, as in these times, leaders of people sometimes let their people down, even during tough times when strong, caring leadership is needed. In the Israel of old, Saul was one of these. And so the God who cared desperately for his people deposed Saul and directed his devoted servant Samuel to go to Bethlehem and await the Lord's choice of successor. Intrigued, Samuel did a lot of people watching as he wondered what the Lord would choose. Being human, he assumed God had in mind someone who looked strong and vigorous, valiant and self-assured. What God said to Samuel is also good counsel for us. Do not look on the appearance, he said, or on one's stature. For the Lord does not see as mortals see, but the Lord looks on the heart. And as we know, the Lord God chose a good-hearted shepherd boy, David, the slayer of Goliath, to become king. You're probably aware of this, but in the church we use a lectionary, a table of Bible readings chosen for each Sunday in a three-year cycle. It always amazes me how appropriate each Sunday's appointed readings are for the circumstances in which we find ourselves. The opening verses of Ephesians chapter 5, from which Sue read this morning, for example, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. In other words, live in love. In love with your God, your life, your family, your friends. But not only in love, but also in light. For here, as there, we have a choice. Once you were darkness, wrote the Apostle Paul, but now, in the Lord, you are light. The Apostle invites us to live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Seeing a blind man, his disciples asked Jesus, Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, the Lord could have engaged his followers in a theological debate. Or he, he could have preached a sermon about sin. He could have rebuked them for their lack of compassion. Jesus did none of these things. He felt the most important thing to do right then was to heal the man's eyes. Hearing of this, 
The Pharisees criticized Jesus for working on the Sabbath instead of rejoicing that a beggar born blind could now see. Proof positive that there is none so blind as they who will not see. What do you see during this crisis we now face? Inconvenience? Boredom? A dearth of entertainment? What would Jesus see? What does Jesus see? Opportunity. Ingenuity. Courage. Heart. Compassion. Love. Sharing and caring. You see evidence of all of these things if you look around. And so I invite you during these troubled times to not just look down and feel sorry, but look around and look up and be surprised as people step up to make things new. For example, the Berlin Philharmonic has made its digital concert hall free for everyone. A distillery in Edmonton has changed its recipe and is now brewing hand sanitizer making and giving away 1,000 liters a day. Cape Breton fiddler Ashley McIsaac is planning on creating an online music festival. Automakers and other industries are retooling on the fly in order to manufacture medical supplies and machines. And even Alberta's chief medical officer of health is encouraging us to see the good in others, and to seize opportunities to do good during these hard times. Ah, but we are only human. And most of us feel we do not have the abilities to do any good in this world. But someone once wrote these words. There is potential in every human encounter for something holy to happen. And we need not fear that our own shortcomings will get in the way of that happening. If you offer who you are and what you have in good faith, then the Holy Spirit will do the work necessary so that others may receive the grace they need. I'd like to conclude with a prayer, a prayer for personal healing written by Rebecca Barlow Jordan and adapted slightly. I really appreciate these words, and if I were as creative as she is, I would have created sentiments like these to say to God. So let us pray. God, you know me so well. You created me. You know the number of hairs on my head. And you even know the thoughts conceived in my heart before I ever vocalize them. You've told us to come to you and ask for every need of life. You are Jehovah, the God who heals. And you have the final word on my destiny, the number of years I'll live and serve you on earth. I'm coming to you today as your child longing to hear from you and asking for your divine healing over my life. There's so much I don't understand about life, but I do know that with one touch, one word, you can make me whole. Please forgive me my sins. Cleanse me of my unrighteousness and begin your healing from the inside out. I don't always know what your will is, Lord, especially in times like these when I desperately seek your face. I can offer you no promises, no bargains, no deals in exchange for my healing. I simply bow my head before you to tell you the desires of my heart. I want to spend as many years as I can loving you here, loving others, and wanting to become more like you. However you choose to accomplish that is up to you and okay with me. 
If you use doctors or nurses or counselors or ministers or friends to help you heal me, give them wisdom to know what to do and say. Regardless of how you accomplish it, the healing you give is always miraculous. You deserve all praise. I absolutely believe you have the power to heal. You demonstrated that on earth, and you still heal in miraculous ways today. Even when my faith is weak, you say it is enough, and my love for you is strong. And I know you already hold my heart and life in your hands. It's up to you. If I can bring you more glory through the healing that you do in me, then that's what I ask for. That's what I desire. But if your answer is no, or not now, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. Ultimately, I want your will to be my will. I look forward to spending eternity with you. But Lord, if you have planned still more for me to do here on this earth, I not only need and want your healing, Lord, but a thorough, deep down cleansing and strengthening, a wholehearted renewal of all that I am. Because all that I am is yours. Use my trials to strengthen me from a what-if faith to a no-matter-what faith. And no matter what, I choose to honor you and give you glory. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for listening. To God's name be the praise and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Following with our usual schedule in the service, we would be having prayers for the people at this point. And we have particular needs at this, at this time, this year. Uh, and so I decided rather than writing the prayer as I typically would do, I went looking. And I looked in Christianity Today, and they have three prayers, especially written for this particular time. Uh, prayers for coronavirus outbreak. So I'd like to read those three to us at this particular point. Please pray along with me. I hope th that they will meet your particular needs. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
for those in isolation. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For those who are ill, merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Rest your healing hand upon them and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. the end of our service we hope that this and trust that this has been a blessing to you and that it will enable you to sustain the difficulties you face during the coming week go now and live as children of life seek what is pleasing to the Lord may Christ open your eyes and guide you along sure paths we go in peace to love and serve the Lord Amen.